Hello and welcome to Muse for You. This is John, your Adobe Muse instructor. In this video, I'm going to be going over the user interface of Adobe Muse. Kind of like what happens when you first get Adobe Muse and you click on it and what you see. Um, so I'll go over this. I'll try to make it quick. There's going to be a few things I'm not going to explain in detail because unless you're really unless you really want to get in, into code and web development and um, you definitely want if you're watching this video you want to get into web development but some of the things are just kind of things that I, I won't touch too much upon because if I did I'd probably be talking for a lot longer um, all right so I'm gonna open up Adobe Muse and this is the uh, first thing we see with uh, Adobe Muse we see uh, this here we can create a new site uh, we can open a recent site, which is pretty useful. Let's say, you know, I just, I'm working on a site and I don't want to, you know, constantly go back and forth between the file and this and that. I can just open up Adobe Muse and uh, just find the site right here. Okay, and then here we have new features. Um, Adobe and the guys at Adobe Muse and Adobe uh, show you kind of the new features they've added to Adobe Muse. Excuse me. Uh, then we have the getting started here. They have a few videos on getting started. Uh, you can watch those if you'd like. Um, then we have tips and techniques. Again, you can kind of browse through these and see some tips and techniques that they offer. Um, so yeah, pretty much uh, Adobe is pretty on it. They offer a lot of cool stuff and help you kind of get started with this. Um, but yeah, I'll just keep going with the video. This is kind of the first welcome screen you see. Um, and to create a new site, you just click here where it says new and click site. Um, you can also go to file and there's a new site right here, but uh, we'll just stick with this one for the moment. Just click new, click site right here and we'll get a new site. Uh, yeah, so now when you click on site, on a new site, you get this new site dialog box. <coughs> dialog box, excuse me. Um, so here we have initial layout. You can pick desktop, tablet, or phone. Uh, you can pick your page width, your min height, columns, column width, gutter, margins, top, bottom, left, right, padding, top, bottom, left, and center horizontally. Uh, this is all fine just as it is. Unless you really know what you're doing with this, I'd suggest just leaving it as it is. Uh, Adobe Muse, or the people at Adobe Muse designed this program to adhere to the, the best web industry standards, so this looks this is pretty good and in my experience I've never really had to change this and it works really well across multiple monitors uh, and desktops and again um, you know when you're creating tablet these things change for those specific devices for tablet and phone and all that so I do trust these um, these values here and I just leave them as it is uh, unless you you know like I said before unless you really know what you're doing you can go ahead and change these values Okay, and then right here we have resolution, um, we have standard, and we have high DPI. Um, high DPI is another word for retina. Apple kind of coined the term retina. You probably heard, you know, like the term retina display. Um, and that's for, for the, um, the Apple monitors that come with really high resolution. I think it might be two times the resolution of what normal monitor, monitors have. You know, I don't know the exact science behind it, but it's really high resolution display. And Muse actually lets you, it's kind of a new feature that, that came out, uh, Muse lets you create websites that have, that have high DPI images in them, so images with really high resolution. And the way you do that, you just kind of make your standard image double the size, and then Muse shrinks it down to add more resolution, I think more, I don't know the exact term, maybe pixel or, or resolution to your image so that it looks really high quality on retina display. Um, I will, I'll be making a video on Retina Display um, or High DPI to 2x two times uh, later on. But for now, we're just going to leave the resolution at standard and language English USA. You can see that they have tons of languages here, which is really useful um, if you speak a different language or if English isn't your first language. Okay, so that's it for the layout. Uh, you can see they have the center horizontally thing here too but again yeah I wouldn't really touch too too many of these values or wouldn't touch them at all um, again I really trust these values and I've used them for, for my websites and they work they work great um, all right so good so I'm just gonna click OK and here we have again the Adobe Muse interface we have plan 
And I really like their plan view. It helps you really kind of see and lay out your website before you even start working on it. It's kind of like a really cool map. Um, and I've used this just to create a map for my web design. I mean, like if I don't know what, how many pages I need or what my website's, what the map of my website's gonna look like, I kind of just go in here and just create a quick map and I'm able to see it in a really neat way because Muse does that. So all of these are pages. I can go into all of these and create a page uh, for all of these. Uh, and I can change the name uh, to stay organized and I can see a really cool map of my website. Okay, and um, here, let's see. Um, yeah, we have the thumbnail uh, button here, master badge. Um, you can just kind of kind of mess with those. Uh, one thing I will kind of mention here is the masters. Um, I'll be getting into this in a later video. I'm actually gonna create a whole video on the masters uh, because this master, actually, if you do something here, it affects every single page here. And you can actually have multiple masters. So if you just wanted, let's say, this is B master, this is A master, B master, and C master. And let's say I wanted C master just on this section here. I just right click and click masters and click C master. Now anything in C master will be applied to all of these, to, any, to this one and to any pages that I apply the C master. And same here, I could apply the B master here and I could apply the A master here. It's already applied here. By default, if you don't have any B or C master, and just the A master, it'll be applied to all of the pages if, um, that you make, uh, unless yeah, unless you assign a different master page to it. Uh, but yeah, I'll be making another video solely on master pages because they're very useful and they will help a lot help you along with your web development and and design. All right, so then uh, we have desktop. Uh, these tabs right up here: desktop, tablet, and um, phone. I just clicked on tablet. And it actually lets you copy from your desktop. So I can copy the site plan, I can copy the page attributes, and I can copy the browser fill, the color of the page. And, uh, or I should say the browser fill. I'm just gonna cancel for now. And the same with phone, I can copy from my desktop, I can copy the site plan, copy page attributes, and copy browser fill. So instead of kind of having to reproduce a whole entire site for the phone or tablet, I can copy it from the desktop Sometimes that works to your advantage. Sometimes it depends what your design looks like on your desktop because if it really doesn't make too much sense for your tablet or phone, um, you, it might not work out too well. So you might just have to kind of create a whole new design for your tablet and phone. Maybe some attributes can be taken from the desktop, um, but sometimes you do have to create kind of from scratch to really give your tablet and phone a really good user experience and a good user interface um, so that it doesn't look clunky because you just you know if you just drag from the desktop and shrink everything down it's it's not gonna maybe make the best tablet or phone site uh, but again that's all in the design process and you know as you design you'll you'll get the feel for what needs to be done for your tablet phone and desktop uh, websites okay so that's the that's the plan view um, then if we go to the design view the design view is just, you know, if I click on a page, any page here, it is going to bring me to the design view. And this is the design view here. We can see we have a few tools here on the left. We have this, uh, this uh, what is this here, the crop tool. I don't use this tool too often. I use kind of the uh, selection tool, the text tool definitely to add text, you know, hello. Um, and this the rectangle uh, tool I use quite a lot to create 100% with um, images that, you know, if you scale your site, like I can fill this with uh, an image. If I just go here and just pick this one and, you know, scale to fill, and do something like that. This image is now 100% with. I can see by clicking there. And if I Command Shift E, preview in the browser, um, I can make this with as big or as small as I want and the, the picture stays 100% width. Uh, so yeah, I, I use the rectangle tool quite a bit. The hand tool um, is just kind of to move, I guess, the site um, kind of where you want 
it positioned on your monitor or within the program. I don't really use the hand tool often. Um, the the zoom tool and the zoom in and zoom out tool uh, I use sometimes like if I want to zoom in to like let's say here and I can zoom out and I think if I hit com um, yeah, if I hit option or alt on my Mac I can zoom out kind of gives me the minus sign if I just click it it gives me the plus sign uh, we have all these up here we have the fill uh, the stroke uh, effects anchor points browser fill I can change you know the browser fill to any color I want you know, I can even go out here to my monitor and just click there and now this blue color is my browser fill here for my website um, and I can even you know one thing I like to do I'll just uh, go back in here and add my logo and scale to fit oops that's not it um, that was the icon here we go logo use for you and then I can even give it because it's a PNG I can give it that color there's my kind of branding or my muse for you logo uh, text and uh, yeah so so there's kind of in the rectangle and uh, we have all these um, windows here or panels I should say we have the text panel the color panel swatches widgets library um, states scroll effects, uh, layers, and I'll be, I'll be going over all of this in all of my videos. This is just kind of an overview of the user interface. Uh, library, um, you can find library items online. Assets, kind of your pictures, so you have this uh, logo final. Um, this is my uh, asset, it's an asset, it's an image in there. And if an asset can no longer be found, this, there's a little warning sign that appears. And if your asset is a retina display, you'll get a two times here uh, showing you that the image is a, uh, a retina display image and that it will display on high resolution monitors like uh, Apple's retina displays. Uh, we have glyphs, which is kind of a fairly new feature with Muse. Um, you can add kind of uh, icons or glyphs and um, I'll get more into that in another video, but uh, it's a pretty cool feature. Um, basically, you can create like vector icons, um, convert them to glyphs, and use them in your Adobe Muse site. Um, you can almost like images that are vector and use them as kind of glyphs, like symbols or icons in, in here. I think that's the best way I can put it, like symbols and icons that sometimes look like images if you know you use it in in um, the correct way. But mostly, yeah, icons and image and um, symbols, things like that. Um, you know, like if you have an icon of a phone or of uh, uh, different different things. Uh, yeah, I'll get into another video. Sorry if that's just kind of trying to find the best way to explain glyphs. But uh, yeah, basically icons and symbols. All right, yeah, moving on. <laughs> um, bullets, uh, this is another new feature that Muse came out with. Um, they didn't have bullets before, but now you can add bullets to your site um, and wrap. Uh, basically, you know, bullets here, if I click on this, kind of the different styles of bullets you can have. And wrap, um, basically, um, you can offset, uh, I think, images and, and text with wrap. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I know I kind of um, went a little bit overboard on the glyphs, so sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for the user interface. And, you know, if we go to preview, uh, Muse has its own preview function. You can preview the site right in here. Um, I don't really like using the preview function too much. Um, I'd rather just use my browser, like Chrome. Um, so I hit Command-Shift-E to preview in my browser. This way I can get kind of a right away look at how my website is looking in a browser. Um, and I can even inspect Element and kind of check out the code behind if I really want to, like... Um, just kind of see what the code looks like uh, behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, and you know, I just yeah like using the browser because it really helps me see what it what it will look like to other people in the browser and what it, my final product will look like. Okay, so there's that, and then we have the publish button. If I click publish, um, it'll ask for my site name and all these different things. Uh, if you have a business catalyst. 
uh, site, then yeah, that's what publish would be used for. Um, but I, I don't tend to use publish. I more use, if I go to file, upload to FTP host, and then I enter in all this information. Um, you know, FTP server, username and password. This you'll get from your host your hosting service or, you know, the hosting provider, you know, whether it be Bluehost, GoDaddy, or whatever hosting provider you use, you should be able to get this information. And once you put in this correct information, you can upload your site to the internet or to the web. Um, I'll be making a whole video on that uh, to show you exactly how to do that. Um, so basically, that's that's it for the user interface. Again, you have you know all these um, you know you have these menu options up here. Um, but I find that uh, you know the these panels here and these tools here and up here. That's all you need for creating your awesome website. You don't really need more than this. And actually, a lot of this stuff is just a reiteration of what's here on the sides. Uh, you actually, the one you'll, you might use quite a bit is object. So if you go to the menu option object, uh, insert widget, you have a few different widget options here. Uh, but it's the same thing as actually going to the widgets library and clicking, you know, forms, detailed contact, compositions, buttons, same exact thing. Um, I think I'm more used to going up here for some reason. I just gotten used to uh, going to my widgets through this uh, this menu object, insert widget, and picking this. And here I've used insert HTML a few times. And let's say um, you don't have a panel that you want, you can go to window and have the panel appear. Like if I want the layers panel, there it is. But I can actually just click right there as well. Uh, one thing I do use quite often um, here in the menu is, is view and fit page and window. Um, that becomes very useful. Obviously, I don't have a really big site, but if I did, I'll show you an example. If I just make this, give it more scroll space, I just kind of grabbed this little arrow here at the bottom, gave it more scroll space, and now if I click on view, fit page and window, I can see the whole site. Um, that becomes useful when I'm working, when I have a really long page, scrolling page, um, I can actually fit page and window and see the entire site and kind of design it a bit better by seeing uh, where everything is pos positioned and aligned and it just helps me in the, in the design process. So again, that was view, fit page, and window. And if I hit command shift E, you can see I have this really long kind of, not very long, but there's more scroll space at the bottom because I added more scroll space. Um, okay, I think that's it for the user interface. I'm gonna go ahead and take the scroll space out because we don't need it. And uh, there it is, uh, Muse for You, that's the image there. Um, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.